Good morning. We have discussed the last couple of days the issue of our tongues. And I want to keep that going. And I think the best way for us to do that is just to spend a several days entering into the central passage in the Bible about the tongue, which of course is James 3, 1 through 12. So what I'd like to do is uh, just pick this apart a bit and let's look at some verses here and maybe work our way through James 3, 1 through 12. So we'll start in James 3, 1. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. It's interesting that as he is landing on the issue of the tongue, the power of the tongue, the boast of the tongue, um, how the tongue needs to be guarded, he uh, starts with the issue of being a teacher. Now, uh, it doesn't mean, as, as we'll see, that a teacher needs to be perfect. There is no such thing as that in terms of perfect meaning without sin. He'll say in the next verse at the very beginning, for we all stumble in many ways, which is true. And yet a teacher who opens their mouth to disseminate the word of God has a stricter judgment. And uh, because of their, their, their life to some measure certainly is never going to match completely, but their life to some measure has to measure up to the text that they're espousing. And so I wanted to think through what are some ways in which um, errors, what are some errors that, that teachers could be susceptible to with their tongue? So I can, I can think of a number of them. I want to give you four clear ones. Here's the first one. A teacher could be susceptible to doctrinal error. That is, they could actually teach something that's incorrect. And as a result of teaching something that's incorrect, they could guide others to apply the word incorrectly. And that could lead people in all kinds of errors in practicality. Because you're, the way you live, your practice follows what you think or believe. Your orthopraxy follows your orthodoxy. Secondly, <clears throat> um, they could be preferential. Uh, meaning that maybe they have an ax to grind on a particular issue that's of a particular uh, importance to them, but maybe of relatively little importance in the big spectrum of things. But that's their deal, and it really gets their goat and gets them fired up. And they end up getting out beyond the text of Scripture because their passion gets away from them, and it's not properly adjudicated as they're communicating, and they're not uh, sort of stopping where the text stops sometimes. <clears throat> uh, third, they could make the error of being too personal. And I don't mean here so much disclosing things about themselves. I, I think um, certainly there's a context to do that, and I, I think it's important to do that. But what I mean is maybe that they're unable to handle a personal offense with somebody that they are instructing with grace, and so they use their pulpit or podium as sort of a bully pulpit or a bully podium. And as a result, they end up wounding people out of a personal offense. And then fourth is the issue that they can be controlling or manipulative. Um, they can try to uh, maybe use different statements in sort of backhanded ways to try to move the meter one direction or another. And it ends up happening in ways that aren't really biblical. They're more about manipulation. So a teacher needs to guard their lips because uh, what they say comes from both what the text is, we hope, but also gets muddled with the motivations of our own hearts. And that's why character is so important to that end. So doctrinal, preferential, personal, or controlling. Those are four ways teachers need to guard their speech. Um, we'll look in future days here more at James 3. May the Lord bless you today.